Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to another one of my videos. Um, I just want to go over some evolution that's occurred in a comment thread. So this one that I talked about in the last video, we've actually had some evolution on the comment thread. So originally it was just Esma's comment in my reply, but now Jazzy has got on board. And um, <clears throat> in the most realist sense, I feel like he's come in and got my back. Um, even, even though S-Man wasn't really um, attacking or to be seen in a position where someone would consider that Jazzy's getting my back. But I, I just read, you know, S-Man's comment, I read into it as a very offensive or defensive uh, take, you know, um, whereas most people would sort of say, or they'd say, okay, maybe we need to work on the, the, the synchronization issue and, you know, um, or, or just come from a neutral uh, perspective. Um, but I mean, S-Man was sort of, it felt like he was defending himself saying, well, other people were doing this as well, not just me. And, you know, it's not that much bigger deal. So I kind of felt like he was attacking the, the idea which would make, um, which would help copiers out. So when Jazzy stepped in, I was like, oh yeah, Jazzy. <laughs> So he was like, with all due respect, S-Man, it only takes a couple of clicks to make your portfolio more synchronized. Uh, just close and reopen the position. That's all it takes. It has zero other consequences, except that it makes your portfolio more transparent uh, to the copiers, um, as it will be included in the risk score. You can argue that you'd like to avoid the spread fee, but the fee is minimal on more asset, most assets. Um, people copy you because uh, they want to have the same performance like you not a fraction of it. I'm pretty sure that if you ran a survey with your copiers, whether they'd like to be in sync or not, they would unanimously choose the first one. And I read that, um, even though I felt like Jazzy was sort of my knight in shining armor in that aspect, at the time I read that and I thought, oh, well, some of that doesn't make sense to me. So I, I sort of come back saying, I mean, I understand why someone wouldn't close reopen, because they'll lose their cheap position and potential for compound growth. You know, but again, in my opinion, traders need to make a choice whether they're long-term and private, a lone wolf, or medium-term, um, copy-friendly in eToro money-receiving eToro trader. Because <clears throat> my point of view was that it does matter if someone closes and reopens. So for example, you bought Bitcoin um, when it was only $1 in 2011 and you've held it all this time up until last year where it reached uh, 20,000. You've made 2 million percent gains, okay? Um, and then someone comes along and says, well, I mean, it's, it might be a good idea for your copies if you close and reopen now. You know, you're gonna think, well, no, because I've got 2 million percent, I'm not closing now, I'm gonna lose my, my $1 mark, you know, it could, I want to hold it and let it go on forever sort of thing. And if you close it and reopen it, you're buying it the 20,000 mark. That's not good. I'd rather buy it the $1 mark. So that's where I was coming from, which I'm sure some of you are thinking now, yeah, I agree with that, but just hold on. That's not true though, says Jazzy. It makes no difference mathematically whether you close and reopen or just keep it open. The only difference is psychological. If I buy a stock at $10, which grows to $100, resulting in 900% profit, uh, the compound interest does not make any difference whether I keep the position open or close and reopen with the $100. If the stock drops back to $50, it, uh, you'll be at a 400% profit in the first scenario if you're just keeping it open or a minus 50% in the second scenario, whereas if you close it and reopen it, which looks horrible at first, but we can both agree that the outcome is exactly the same in both scenarios, which is that you made $40 in total, or in other words, 400%. 
on your original investment. I say it's psychological because the profit loss percentage does not tell the whole story. They would have to consider every single investment you have made in that stock to show the true profit loss. And that kind of blew me away in a sense. Like I know there's some of you watching like, well, that's obvious. But there's also some of you that's probably like, wow. But I thought about it and then I started writing a reply to Jazzy, which was uh, the example of the, the $1 Bitcoin. Like you don't want to close it at 20, 20K, you want to keep it open at a dollar. Halfway through writing it out, I was like, well, hold on. No, he is right on that part. And then I started thinking about other elements to it, like how he could be wrong. So I started writing and then I was like, oh no, he's right on that part too. He's, he's right on all the parts. So then I, I deleted it. I was like, that's very true. I was halfway through writing a counterpoint, but in every angle, you're right. Because <sighs> let's go back to the Bitcoin example. So if you buy Bitcoin at $1 in 2011 and it reaches the 20K mark last year in 2020, you've made 2 million percent profit. Now in scenario A, you could not close it, which would not be good for your copiers uh, because it, they'll be out of sync. The idea of the whole sync and desync situation is that you close frequently in a sense that you don't really go over 100% profit or 200% profit on any asset. Um, so that you keep the synchronization nice and tight between yourself, the trader, and the others, the copiers. So in scenario A, let's say you don't, you know, you're just trading for yourself, you've got a private account, you don't care about the copiers. Scenario A, you don't close and reopen, you just keep it as it is. And let's say it goes to $40,000. Uh, sorry, let's say Bitcoin jumps to 40K. Okay, so it's currently on 20, it jumps to 40. Instead of a 2 million percent gain, you're gonna have a 4 million percent gain and you've doubled your money. In scenario B, if you close at 20K and you reopen and you put all your money back on at 20K and then it goes up to 40K, I mean, you instead of making a 4 million percent gain, you would have made a 100 percent gain, but you would have doubled your money just like you would have in scenario A. Now let's look at it a different way. In scenario A, it, it goes it goes from one dollar Bitcoin price to twenty thousand dollars Bitcoin price. If it starts to go down a little bit, maybe to like ten k, you're not going to think as much of it in comparison to scenario B because you're still going to be in the green. Your stats are still going to be one million percent profit, and you'll still have a lot of money and gains. The psychological aspect of having the green there and the profit and like you're doing really well you're a million percent that's still really good but if you had closed and reopened at 20k and then it went down to 10k you'd now be at minus 50 percent and it would say like you've lost half your money which is a bad psychological aspect but in both situations it's exactly the same amount of money you still gained or still lost exactly the same amount of money, whether it's in scenario A or scenario B. And it works the same for the statistics on eToro. You know, whether you hold it at 20K and it goes down to 10K, you still lost 50% for that asset. But if you close and reopen and put all your money that you've made back into it at 20K and then it goes down to 10, you still make, so you've still lost 50% profit. So on the eToro statistics side, which is shown to you know everyone, you're still losing the same amount. So whichever way you look at it, in every possible angle, everything works out exactly the same. I said you'd obviously have to put the same total amount back in though, uh, value. And then S man comes along and says, I do not fully agree. And at this point, after I've just had this eureka moment with Jazzy, it's like, oh, come on, S man, <laughs> you don't fully agree. Come on, I just, <laughs> um, everyone has their opinions. 
But if people would do just as you say, i.e. close the position and reinvest again, everything there is basically one main issue for the copiers. This percentage of the portfolio will be invested in one single position. For PI, this does not change much as the money um, from the increase is in the position. For the copiers, old and new ones, this will change a lot as it will be real money into a single company. And this is where I started thinking like, ah, okay. Imagine people having 50% value in one company. They cannot make their copiers invest 50% of their money into a single company. So this is where I started to think. I mean, the whole point of this is that you don't want the value too big in one asset compared to how much you invested. You don't want the value too big because it will be out of synchronization. If you were to do this in attempt to fix the desync issue, let's say, for example, your Bitcoin is 50% uh, value. Your original invested was uh, 1%, and now it's at 50% value. And that's very bad for the copiers because it's drastically out of synchronization. It's just such a difference. 1% invested and 50% value. It's just too much. So the solution that me and Jazzy are kind of going down at the moment is, well, close that 50% value and whatever money you've made on that, put it back in. So you close and reopen, so the value's gone. The value is back down to 1%. They're both like equal or whatever. They're, it's in sync. <laughs> but, you know, we're missing the point that's right in front of us, which is if you put the money back in, instead of the value being 50%, the invested is going to be something crazy like 50%, around 50% or 50%. And that's obviously a lot worse than having the value at 50% because that's the invested amount and that's what the copiers directly copy. And I was like, uh, that's very true also. We can't have 50% into one asset. I think in my opinion, the only solution would be to stop and reopen, but with a similar amount to the original invested. And then therefore you'd have all the excess money have new uh, trades, you know, hedge your bets with different assets or a reasonable amount, definitely less than 50% of the portfolio. And at, the, at this point in time, I think this is the the only way um, when it gets to 100%, 200% profit on an asset, if the value is so out of whack, like it's at 30% and the investor was like 3% or something, and it's 10 times the amount, it needs to close, reopen, but you don't put all the money back on that you just made with it. Something similar to the original amount, so it's not too high. And also, I, as I, I said, that's really good to hear that you care a lot about your copiers and, and will rebalance for them. That's really respectable. Because initially on the, the very first comment uh, s -Man left, it kind of seemed like he was defending himself, saying, well, other people uh, are out of sync as well. They've got high percentages and I'll you know, I will close some of my neo positions as I, said, as I said I would for my copiers, but I mean, it's not a big deal. The percentage isn't that high. It's not, you know, he, he was coming across like, like that. So it kind of felt like he was, he felt like he was being forced to do it in a way. And, you know, um, so when he, when he was saying like, you know, I care a lot about my copiers, um, and I'm going to rebalance the portfolio just for them. I do not know about the other PIs. So when he said that, it was like, ah. Oh, I've, you actually like gained a lot more respect from me. Like it's a much more sincere and genuine uh, paragraph, if you will, sentence. I mean, we were going to come back to S Man anyway, just because of his percentages, and I, you know, he's he's one of the team, even though he's not as close um, as Jazzy and Jace. Um, you know, he, he's he's one of the boys. <laughs> um, and, you know, even more so now, I feel like maybe I was a, a bit harsh and maybe even a bit paranoid in reading his first comment. So we'll come we'll come back to S-Man in, in the start of the next quarter, which is April 1st. Um, but he does need $360 and he may even need even more by then. Hopefully less. Maybe he'll sort something out and he'll be less. So, uh, you know, usually I like to only do $200 per quarter. So we'll see if I can get 360 um, you know, S Man is definitely going to be next on the list. I want him back. Uh, it's just, you know, things happened, and you know, Jace is taking his position right now from the substitute bench. We'll, we'll come back for you, S Man. We'll save you. We'll get you back.
So yeah, we'll see what happens, but I just thought it'd be important to get this information out there, uh, try and sort of grasp the, the concept of what Jazzy said in his post. You know, that's ultimately what makes traders so sort of, you know, they be, need to be so calculated and driven because it's not just about numbers on the screen. There's, there's many different ways to go about it. I mean, to go ahead with this scenario, which is you're helping the copiers out by not being out of sync, but the numbers are going to be all different. It's going to be psychologically affected. You have red numbers um, if you close and reopen. So, I mean, you could, you know, they could have an Excel sheet or something saying how much money they've actually put in. It's basically getting more trickier. The, the waters are getting more muddier by doing this, but you're also helping people. You're helping the copiers because they're more in synchronization. So there's more burden on yourself. You'd have to take more notes and be more aware, but you're helping everyone at the same time. So it's, uh, yeah, I, I don't envy the traders. There's a lot sort of on their shoulders and you know it's a learning curve for, for everyone, the copiers and the traders. I hope there's something there for you to think about. Maybe uh, rewatch the video, pause certain sections, or just go onto the eToro post and on my on my page and have a look. So let let me know what you think about this. Um, thanks thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Cheers.